This is John Lagain, and these are some of the highlights of my life. We were so lucky. We lived in Terminal Island, right across the street from the beach. And here's my, all my brothers and my father pointing out toward the ocean uh, on Terminal Island. When we were uh, 8, 9, and 10 years old, we lived at 455 8th Street when the Cabrillo Avenue School. It's so difficult to take a picture of the whole family. There were five of us on lifeguards. The only picture uh, that did not include my brother Gus is this one. My mother was a wonderful person. And my two sisters, are they're still around too, Esther and Belia. When I went to high school, I was so lucky. You know, they elected me student vice president. Here's a picture when I went to San Pedro High School. Hey, that was a long time ago. And when I got in the war, luckily, right to begin with, I been corporal and sergeant. I ended up being a platoon sergeant in combat in New Guinea and in the Philippines. And was I ever happy, I ended up with the third highest medal in America, the Silver Star. Jack Cheney was the chief lifeguard at Annis Memorial Playground and swimming pool, and he insisted that I be a lifeguard to help our family. Well, when we got married, Merrill and I, he had to be our best man because he introduced us to each other when we were 12 and, th and 14 years old. And from this wonderful 52-year-old marriage came three children, Viola Olguin Keith, Monica Olguin Patton, and two grandchildren, Micah and also Tanaya, and then Johnny Olguin married to Le Julia Lacey with two grandchildren, Molly and Emmy. Folks, let me tell you where we live. 35 years ago, we moved outside in the porch. We can see the stars and the moon. We can tell you when the fog comes in, when it starts to rain. It's fresh air, and we wouldn't sleep inside of a house or anything in the world. We love it outdoors. The Cabrillo Beach Museum was started by the Los Angeles City Lifeguard Service. And our first director was Dr. William L. Lloyd, a retired dentist. He did a wonderful job developing the bathhouse into a museum. Our lifeguards were made up of the name Olguin. Five of us were lifeguards all by the name Olguin. I was the captain and my brothers worked for us. We didn't have a Jeep and we needed a Jeep to save people off a Point Furman cliff when they fell off the cliff. This is the photograph of the first Jeep that was promoted from uh, the city hall. They gave us the Jeep to be painted and overhauled and, and made a brand new Jeep out of it. So this is our first Jeep that we promoted at no cost to the taxpayer. This is a photograph of our hero, Senator Stephen M. White, the man who got the money to build the Los Angeles Harbor Breakwater here in San Pedro instead of Santa Monica. And this is his grandson, Stephen M. White, Jr. When the breakwater was 80 years old and 100 years old, we had a celebration, a birthday party for the breakwater. The Army loaned us a 55-millimeter howitzer to shoot off. We uh, borrowed a tug from the Harbor Department, and uh, we made a biodegradable rock. And the Dixieland band played. Bill Olson covered with the sheep played the part of Stephen and White. Oliver Vickery was uh, Phoenix Banning. And Bill Thamaris was the telegraph man to telegraph President McKinley back in Washington, D.C. When the gun went off, the barge shoved the rock off the barge, but it didn't sink. It had 200 pounds of sand, but it floated. Everybody laughed, and then it went very slowly and disappeared. It took 25 years to get the statue on Stephen and White Street right above Cabrillo Beach. Thanks to Miss Meritich and Sam Botwin, the statue is there today for you to enjoy. You know, we have two museums, really the old bathhouse where the museum started, and then the new Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. And the new Cabrillo Marine Aquarium has volunteers that make it successful. Over 500 volunteers donate their time. The junior high school students work during the month of July. High school work during the month of September. College students, they work uh, on Tuesday evenings during World Watch programs um, in November, December, uh, January, February, and even up to March. The adults, they work uh, during the year giving school tours uh, in the daytime. And a few special volunteers, like Dr. John Haney, started with us when he was going to junior college. Today, he has a degree in mammalogy, and he heads up the marine mammal program at the Los Angeles County Museum of Natural History. And Deanna McIntyre also was a, a school teacher, and she came as a volunteer, and now she's lecturing on whales and leading tours all over the world. 
Another special volunteer is E.R. Emmanuel Rosales. Started in the seventh grade. He stayed till he graduated from college. He took the test and became our first curator at the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. Bob Brownell, at the age of 12 years old, came down to the museum and he stayed there until he got his PhD in marine mammalogy. Today, he heads up, or he did head up, a marine mammal study for the United States Navy. Our first whale watcher, our pride and joy, Bob Brownell, Dr. Bob Brownell. Whale watching started when I was a lifeguard, and we thought it's much more thrilling rather than just to show the whales to the children from the beach to take them out on boats. So 22nd Street Landing, San Pedro Sports Station, was the first boat that agreed to do it for one dollar apiece. It was totally successful. We have taken out over one million children and teachers out to see whales from Southern California. We even go down to Mexico to even touch and kiss the whales. And at the end of the year, in the month of June, we always have a whale fiesta and we make a full-size whale out of sand. And this photograph has appeared in National Geographic in the children's magazine. And the first sand whale was made it be down the beach. We wanted to be sure we could do it. Today, we start at 9 o'clock in the morning on the first Saturday in June, and we make a whale that must be finished by 2 o'clock. And you get all the free lemonade you can drink and ice-cold watermelon. It's fun. In 1542, Cabrillo discovered California. And every year, on the first Saturday after Labor Day, we go out to San Miguel Island, and we reenact the discovery of California with Cabrillo and his crew. We climb to the top of the mountain, and we put a wreath on Cabrillo's grave marker. You are welcome to come along on this trip. In the past, we made small boats, we had parades, and we had a, an all-day celebration at Cabrillo Beach. But we lo no longer do this since I have retired 12 to 13 years ago. Richard Henry Dana was the first one to write about the Pacific Coast. Here, Captain Ray Wallace on the Brig Pilgrim is coming to shore, preparing to throw the heights off the cliff, and members of the San Peter Bay Her Historical Society are all dressed up for the occasion using a live donkey. After experimenting for five years taking children to the tide pool, I went to Sacramento and requested that the area be set aside from Cabrillo Beach to the Point Permit Lighthouse as the Marine Life Refuge. Here we are talking to the children, explaining that they take nothing but photographs and leave nothing but footprints. And Senator Ralph Dill is cutting the seaweed ribbon to open up the area for the general public. In 1949, this little girl said, lifeguard, lifeguard, what do I have in my paper cup? Oh, and it looked like polywog. She showed me there were little grunions. That started it. In 1951, we began to take people out at night to see the grunion. We have never missed a grunion run since 1951. It put our museum on the map. It has made us famous. National Geographic even ran a beautiful article about our museum and the grunion program. And after they run, we collect the grunion eggs, keep them for two weeks, pass them out to children in jars, pour seawater, roll them around, and they hatch out live fish in one minute. Absolutely exciting for everyone. The Point Family Lighthouse was built in 1874. Some of my earliest memories was walking in front of the lighthouse. Here are my two brothers, and I'm only four years old, and I'm quite four years old. And then 100 years, uh, at the 100 year celebration, here's the same picture when we're all in our 50s and near 60 years old. Bill Olson and I were co-chairman of Restoring the Lighthouse. When we had the big party, our mayor, Tom Bradley, showed up, and it was a fantastic day. I'd like to show you the footage on legendary lighthouses that appeared nationwide. <laughs> 